Chapter 29 A lady and a very bristly gentleman. Look, mother, cried Joan, but mother was already looking. So was everyone else, and some other girls came up from another party and stared too. And well they might, for a kangaroo carrying her baby is not seen every day. One little girl had a doll in her hands. Mrs Kangaroo spread out her forelegs as much as to say, See, mine is a much better way. Why don't you carry your babies like this? No need to use your hands at all. Splendid, said Uncle. No expense for perambulators and no need to pay half fare on the railway. Simply took in the youngster's head and travel as one passenger. Doesn't the baby ever come out? asked Kitty. Of course he does, sometimes. When Mrs Kangaroo is being hunted and she sees no chance of escape, she throws him out. Oh dear, said Kitty, always soft-hearted. I shouldn't have thought she would be so cruel. Oh, it's not cruelty at all. She wants her little one to have a chance of getting away, even if she can't. At the same time, of course, by lightening her weight, she increases her own chance. But it is not often that the does, or mothers, are hunted. Old man kangaroo, as he is called, is a great big fellow, well able to take care of himself, capable of hopping fifteen feet at a time, and with a sharp spur on his hind foot, that will easily kill a dog. Sometimes, if he can get to a water hole, he will seize the pursuing dogs with his hand-like forepaws and hold them under water until they are drowned. A kangaroo of this kind will be five feet long, with a great tail almost the same length. But there are many smaller members of the family, generally known as wallabies, ranging down to the size of rabbits and rats. There are even some little ones that climb trees and are therefore called tree kangaroos. Of course, you know where kangaroos come from. Yes, said Wally. Australia. Right, and it is a curious fact that they are not found anywhere else except in the adjoining islands. And it is almost the only animal of which it can be certainly said that it is native to Australia and has not been introduced from some other country. Captain Cook and his people who discovered Australia were much puzzled when they saw this hitherto unheard of animal and it is said, ask the natives the name. Can you tell us, etc. The natives who could not understand replied by imitating the first part of the question. Can you? And the sailors therefore took Kangu or Kangaroo to be the name. That is the story though many other explanations have been given. Anyway, the kangaroo has long been regarded as the national emblem of the great Commonwealth, whose brave soldiers played so glorious a part in the wars for freedom. Well, may their motto be, Advance Australia. Really, Rupert? Mother said. You are quite eloquent. I had no idea until today. Oh, Mother broke in Joan, fearing this would be taken as a signal for moving on. Uncle knows lots more, don't you, Uncle? No, not very much. And I must try not to be eloquent. Perhaps Mother will run a pin into me if I get unbearable. I... What's eloquent? asked Kitty. And before anyone could answer, what do they stand up for? One question at a time, please. Eloquent, as you call it, is not an animal. Perhaps Mother will explain to you presently. By they, I suppose you mean the kangaroos. Yes, said Kitty simply. She did not like Mother and Uncle poking fun at each other. The kangaroos were much more interesting. Well, you notice that the hind legs are larger and stronger than the forelegs. Indeed, the latter are little more than hands. So the kangaroo is evidently intended to stand. Also, he has the advantage of being able to lean up against his tail. Lean up against his tail, echoed Joan. Yes, 
The hind feet and the tail together form a kind of tripod, or three-legged support, so the kangaroo can stand all day and not be tired. You see, he lives in the bush and long grass, and his favourite attitude enables him to look over the top and get a good view of an approaching enemy. His head, you notice, is very tiny and has some resemblance to a deer's. But the children were not listening. Was it likely the baby kangaroo had come out? Uncle waited very patiently, but it seemed improbable that Joan and Kitty would ever come away. The darling, the pet, isn't he sweet? He heard, and at last, from Kitty. Will his mother catch cold? I think not, but I shall, if we stay here much longer. The boys and I are just going across the road to see the porcupine. We shan't be long, and we... That was enough. I want to see porcupine, said Kitty. Oh, do you? You must come along then. Now, I wonder what you think a porcupine is. Something good to eat? Yes, said Kit, without a moment's hesitation, aware of the approach of lunchtime. Well, pick him up and cook him, laughed Uncle, as they entered a darkened room, and he pointed to a glass-screened cage, in which lay curled up a blackish, bristling creature, about two feet long. I can't pick him up, said Kitty, not unless I went in his house. I fancy you'd be rather sorry too, then. Watch. He tapped at the glass. At once the creature rose, and his quills stood out stiffly, so that he seemed to swell to twice the size. Have you ever picked up a hedgehog? asked Uncle. I found one once, said Phil proudly. He was rolled up in a ball with dead leaves stuck all over him. I tied him up in a handkerchief and Dad said we could keep him to eat up the beetles in the outhouse, but he ran away. Very inconsiderate of him, I'm sure. Well, the porcupine is a great deal worse to handle than the hedgehog, which is the only spiny animal we have in England. As a matter of fact, gypsies and other people do eat hedgehogs and I believe it is not so very uncommon for an Italian peasant to sit down to roast porcupine. It is remarkable that all the porcupines in America, they are mostly found in South America, live in trees, while the porcupines of Europe, Africa and Asia burrow in the ground or live among rocks. The tree people have long tails and their spines are much shorter. The common porcupine, when his quills are up, is a creature to be respected. Those sharp daggers are sometimes 15 inches long and he has a nasty way of walking backward and driving them home with the whole weight of his body. When he walks, the quills in his tail make a kind of rustling sound. It used to be said that he could dart his spines at an enemy from a distance, but that is absurd. People must have got the idea from finding loose quills that had dropped out. I don't like him, said Kitty. He's too bristly. I hope you don't say the same of me. And now, who'd like lunch? The girls by this time were as eager as the boys. After all, bristly people are not nearly so interesting as kangaroo babies. And Joan and Alice had to admit to themselves that they did rather want to see what Nurse was like. Phil said he didn't care, but he did. As for Harold, well, you never knew, because he never spoke. <laughs>